Um, next, we have some cleaning questions. Yep. Um, for cleaning the material before welding, you can use remote cleaning, you can use seam cleaning. What do you see out of both of those? Seam cleaning, I, I, you know, it might be a preferred if you're doing just kind of smaller welds. You just gotta, you know, it's an old rusty piece. You just gotta run a, you know, a four inch weld on it, one and done. Definitely go with the seam cleaning. It's easier just to swap over a quick little nozzle. You can switch the machine quickly. It'll clean exactly the weld path you need. So like I said, if you're doing a couple welds on an old rusty part, I would stick with seam cleaning. If it's something where you're looking to possibly restore an item. Or refinish yep. a complete I-beam that yep. comes in. You want to repaint it, anything like that. That's when I would go with remote cleaning. And we even do have a lot of customers that decide to purchase both machines and set one up just for cleaning, set one up just for welding, or even seam cleaning. Uh, we have another customer, they do a lot of stainless they have one machine just for seam cleaning, one machine just for welding. They'll weld it, pass it to the next station, he'll clean it, et cetera. So like, like James said, they both have their advantages, but definitely if we're just going for, we just want some area to weld on an old rusty part, stick with seam cleaning, but if you're doing anything like refinishing, refurbishing, stuff like that, it might be worth with going to remote cleaning. So. Yeah, and both of them can be used for pre-cleaning and yep. post-operation cleaning. 100%. If you have large parts with numerous welds on them, whether it's carbon steel, stainless yep. steel, Instead of taking the seam cleaner and hitting every weld individually, yep. you can switch over to remote cleaning, cover more surface yep. area faster, get that part ready for paint faster. And one thing we did want to share about remote cleaning is that it's not a instant remove all rust. It's basically burning the layers away. So if you have something that has you know very, very deep rust on it, you can take it away. It's just going to take multiple passes. And you'll notice you kind of keep burning through layer by layer and then you'll eventually get down to that clean metal underneath, so. Yeah, and it's the same thing if there's paint, yep. um, whether it's powder coating, yep. whether it's sprayed on, even just generic spray yep. paint. You get enough layers on there, the laser's only removing so much per pass. Yep. So now we've put on our seam cleaning tube. What that gives us the ability to do is switch the function in the machine to one of the other three and be able to post clean this weld and then we'll show you some pre-cleaning as well. Now with the seam cleaning tube still attached, we're gonna pre-clean this T-joint, get it ready for welding. Notice how the red light indicator is centered on the joint to ensure that you're cleaning the weld area prior to pulling the trigger. Now we're gonna be welding on this T-joint that we just pre-cleaned with our dual wire feeder. It's just as important to pre-clean your material with the laser as it is with any other application such as MIG or TIG. Now we'll be going over some remote cleaning. We have our new sensor installed on the bottom there. It acts as a distance sensor and will prevent you from pointing the laser in unintended directions. And uh, let's get into it. And the biggest key you'll see on that is a noise difference. When you get to an already reflected material, like the, the steel underneath the mill scale, it'll die down on the sound and it'll allow you to recognize that you've already cleaned that area. Um, next one will be consumables. What are our consumables for our laser welders? Yeah, so this one's gonna vary depending on what you're doing a little bit. If, if you're running super hot, you're running 2000 watts every day, you're running dual wire, you know, something like a nozzle is going to be a major consumable for you. But for the general use of the laser, doing smaller welds, lower heat welds, 
really the biggest ones are going to be your protective lens, you know, a focus lens. We, we do recommend maybe once, once every one or two years. It's just going to be one of those things that it depends on what exactly you're doing. If you're running 2,000 watts every day, you might have to change it within the first year. If you're running, you know, 500 watts every day, you might not have to change it for five or six years. You know, it just depends exactly what you're doing. But definitely and how clean you keep your protective. That as well. That That's as the well. biggest thing. Yep. If you're welding, if you're trying to weld overhead carbon steel, yep. you're going to have spatter that drops back down through the nozzle yep. into that protective lens. Yep. If you don't change that, it's now you can damage all up. the other lenses. Yeah, exactly. So, what do you notice with that protective lens when it is going bad? Um, the first thing you'll notice instantly is a, a lack of power. It's preventing the laser from fully passing through, so you might notice 70, 40, 50 percent power. You know, and it, it's pretty noticeable. I mean, even at 2,000 watts on a burnt lens, it might not even melt the wire in some cases. So that's going to be the biggest telltale sign. Another telltale sign can be is there's going to be some soot around your weld. You know, that's not always a guarantee because sometimes there is weld soot. You know, whether it's aluminum or whatever it may be, but if you are getting a lot of soot around your weld it would be worth checking the protective lens. The other thing that I've noticed with the two when the protective lens is going bad yep. is you start to see less and less spanner. Yep, and less sparks as well, yep. almost no sparks. And uh, another big thing can be a sound change as well. When it's when it's good, it yep. almost sounds like that MIG welding, that kind of crispy bacon, sizzling, and then when it does die out, it's more just kind of a, a hiss. You know, it's very quiet. Yep, there's no crackle to it or anything like that. It's just a hiss, so. Just wanted to go over the most commonly used consumables on our equipment. We'll start with the protective lens. This is located at the front of the torch where you'll see those two large thumb screws. Like I said, this is gonna be the most used consumable out of anything you'll see here today. It's hard to pinpoint the exact reason of why it's going bad. You know, there's a multitude of things. It could be welding angle, it could be the material being welded on, it could be a lack of gas pressure. So the easiest way to kind of narrow it down is turn, you know, as you're welding, if you notice it, just try to eliminate the factors, turn your gas pressure up, try adjusting your welding angle, things like that. Next, we'll move on to our nozzle kit here. You'll notice these tips in here as well. These can go bad after a long period of time, but just from natural kind of friction of the wire, grinding it down. And these nozzles as well. If you're running on that lower wattage end, you know, 500, 1,000, 1,200, you should have no issues and you should get a lot of life out of these nozzles. If you have some of our larger models or are running closer to 2,000 watts and you're doing longer seam welds like you know, five, six, seven, maybe even 10 foot seam welds, you might notice that these, these uh, copper bronze nozzles are starting to deform on you, getting a little bit of uh, kind of falling in your puddle as well and contaminating your welds. So we have just came out with these recently, these graphene nozzles. These are super heat resistant. They are more fragile, comparable to a TIG cup. Um, but they are very heat resistant. You can get these going red hot, they'll cool down almost instantly in about maybe 20, 30 seconds. They won't deform. Like I said, they can be fragile like a TIG cup, but they are still very durable, so. Um, what are your pros and cons of laser welding? Where do, you think that, where do you think that laser welding really fits in to the welding industry and the community yeah. based on what you can do with it, where it can go? Yeah. I would say definitely some of the pros are, you know, it can increase production a little bit. Um, it can be great for the new guys because it is so easy to use. So in a higher level TIG welding shop, you know, a guy can start on a laser, still produce quality welds and still practice, you know, getting his TIG certs and stuff like that on overtime launch, things like that. So it's a good starting place for a lot of younger guys. Um, like I said, some other advantages, overall cost, depending on how you're using the machine, you can save a lot of cost. Um, and as well, like I said, just kind of in increasing production and things like that that can speed some things up. And definitely a lot of refinishing can be avoided with the laser, you know, not having to rebend parts and things like that. So. Yeah, and a lot, of, a lot of the applications, I mean, thin gauge, anything thin gauge the laser is ideal for, yep. whether it's yep. aluminum, stainless, carbon yep. steel. Even getting into that thicker quarter inch material with the 3000 watt unit, you're starting to get into that realm of a little bit heavier duty workloads. Yep higher wattages and still getting out quality yeah. parts with speed, especially in those yeah. production. No, 100%. And you know, like, like you said, just, just kind of being able to dial the machine in and always keep going faster, 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 and finally achieve where you want, you know. And we can, you know, speeds are, can be comparable to some spray bags, but when you compare it to TIG welding, you know, it really can't keep up as far as speed. And just with so, the accuracy. Yep. Yeah. The accuracy. Um, you can program any of your settings into that machine and say Zach was running these parts yep. on Monday I have to run them on Tuesday 
we're going to have identical parts coming from two different people. Yeah. Whereas we all know that if you're TIG welding or MIG welding it, everybody has a little bit different technique and it changes the look of the part. Yeah. And honestly, going back to the accuracy thing, we can also consider that a downside. You know, one of the downsides of laser is the precision. You know, sometimes you're off just, you know, hair and it causes your weld to either derail or the, the wire doesn't melt right because your laser's off a little bit. So that can be one of the hardest parts of adjusting the laser is the precision, getting used to, I gotta be exactly in that joint, getting used to making sure that your wire is lined up on your laser every time. Cause like I said, if it's off, an eighth of an inch, you know, it might not even weld at all. Exactly, so that could definitely be one of the downsides to consider. Yeah, and with that as well, your fit up is very important. Yep. If you're in a one-off fab shop, everything's hand cut, you're gonna have fit up issues potentially because the laser can only fill a gap that's the size of the filler metal. Yep, just like James said, you know, the filler metal's all you got, so you guys know out there how small 030, 035, 045 wire is. You know, any gap larger than that, you're really gonna have issues. And even on our largest kind of gap filling setup with dual wire with, you know, dual 1 16th wire, maximum you're maybe gonna get about an eighth inch of gap out of it before you start having issues, so. Yeah, you're gonna just over, the laser yeah. will just over penetrate through the joint. Yep. Um, there are ways to mitigate that. Yeah. You could use a lay wire technique yep. in there to help yep. fill that gap. Um, but just with the standard wire, wire feeder and the laser, Fit up as can. Yeah, you can use some old, like you said, some other techniques, like even some bridge tacking kind yeah. of techniques where you weld on top of yourself. But if you want the smoothest, kind of cleanest weld possible, you definitely want to avoid the gaps. But that's not a huge issue for a lot of our customers. We've even seen guys that change their process because the laser has improved efficiency so much that they would rather spend a little bit more time on forming and less time on welding. So, and the finishing side. Yeah, exactly. Once you're finishing, there's not much there to actually yep. take off and finish. Yep. And then with that, we, we still continue to say that the laser is just another tool in the yep. toolbox. Yeah. It's not gonna replace your, your stick welders. Yep. They're still gonna be the functions that stick welders are can. Yep. Especially going out into the field doing half inch, 3A steel work, you're gonna wanna stick weld that, buzz it through. 100%. Getting back into your smaller applications with the jet, still mobile, you can take it anywhere, yep. even the EZ. Yep. You can take that thing anywhere, there's a little bit more setup that needs to be done, yep. but you're getting back into that fit up, making sure everything's precise. 100%, and we always joke here, the one thing we always say is, you know, the laser's not building any bridges right now, but that's just, that's the nature of the beast. You know, this machine is meant for your thinner materials. Not saying that you can't go up to your thicker materials, we're always working on newer and larger machines to achieve that, um, but as of right now, you know, like we said, our max is about that 3 eighths limit, so. Yeah, 3 eighths, maybe a little more, and yeah. with that we're getting, Five sixteenths yep. of root penetration into yep. that lab joint. Yeah. Um, so with that, we're really looking. We're always looking for more things to be able to add to the machine, yep. make the machine better, make it more user friendly. Yep. And I think that was the whole purpose of doing this. This whole video here was to be able to talk about it, yep. talk about all the settings, talk about the equipment, and then be able to also show you what is actually happening when you change these settings. Like James said, we're always working on new additions. We always want to improve the machine. Um, I believe one thing we were just discussing is coming out with the wire feed trigger. Another maybe downside kind of complaint that we've had is the you know the wire feed. You always got to make sure that your laser's right on it, and it's nice because or it's, sometimes it's difficult because you got to walk over to your wire feeder, feed the wire out. So like you said, we're we're incorporating that now, so you'll be able to just squeeze the trigger, feed some wire out, and then get to welding. So yeah, we're all we're always trying to improve the machines. We're always trying to move forward as the technology comes to us. Yep. The more that this technology advances, the more applications the laser will fit yep. into, not just for your small run production, but for large scale yeah. operations. 100%. Um, and we've seen really, it's been shining on the automation side for a few years now. Um, a lot of other big players like Trump Laser, those guys, they're doing some pretty crazy stuff with fusing, but really when it comes to the welding side, there isn't much going on. So like I said, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to come to the table for you guys and always bring in the new and best we have to offer, so. And with that, we have all our support here in our Elgin facility yep. where we're at right now. Um, don't forget to check us out at www.denaliweld.com. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the YouTube. Yeah, if, if you go on the channel as well, there's a lot of other great videos about welding. Um, we're offering a rental service, not things like that. We, we're trying to open the door more to you guys because we understand there's a, a high cost point to lasers. So we want to try to expand and allow these guys to try it out, you know, before really kind of diving into the pool. That's why we have multiple units yep. 
going from our 500 watt Jet Easy up to our new air cooled Jet 3000 that's in production right now yeah. that's going to be coming out here within the next month. Yeah, and the uh, the Jet Easy, you know, um, you know, some people might consider it a hobby machine, but we think it's a great way to get your foot in the door. You know, it's a, a low cost point, and it really it's going to weld the exact same that this machine behind us is going to weld. It's just at a lower penetration, so it's something where you want to see how the welds are going to look. You want to experiment with it a little bit before you dive into that larger price tag. That's a you know a more than viable machine to make that happen. So yeah, before you get into that professional machine yep. that's set to run for eight, yeah. nine, ten, eleven hours a day, that Jet EZ is a great option yeah. to just get your feet wet with yep. the laser. See what it's all about. See what it can really do for you. Hundred percent. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Again, I'm James. I'm Zach. And we'll catch you next time. Have a good one, guys.